it is finished so there are some things here that are not normal in my normal my world of normal means that you have a schluter or a bull nose he did not want that he wanted grout on the edge of there with the factory edge showing mm, which is different mm, i may have done that a few times back 18 19 years ago but not any time lately same thing with the niche there is no trim it's just factory edge showing um, and then this waterfall shaved rock down the center which is also different uh, but it is finished it is done finito i am out of here i like the contiguous curb tops that they are selling now more often um, it just prevents any type of issues with grout lines and all that stuff plus i think it looks cleaner and then he wanted that kind of match up with that So I'm making this video for those of you out there that want to know, oh, sorry, tub to shower conversion, tub to shower conversion. And some of you are kind of um, confused as to how the process starts and certain things that I want to kind of go through here. So I've done a couple, I think I've done two or three videos on how to do a drain on a concrete slab and specifically a tub to shower conversion this is grade the grade is down here in the dirt and probably about uh, it's always kind of different but usually it's about 10 12 maybe 14 inches inside from the top here to inside of there where the p-trap is at so nobody's going to even a plumber is not going to dig into all this concrete to get below grade to get to that p-trap and swap that out to a two inch that's not going to happen so retroactively speaking we come up to somewhere about here we're going to transition with a coupling a um, reducer if you will that is going to extend up from here to two inch because we have to have a two inch drain so if you notice here this is the tub top the bottom of the tub the top of the flange there which is right here which used to be the tub and then on the other side there is the overflow which is right here so the only place I can get a bite, I can't get a bite here because there's a 22 and a half, uh, sorry, a 45, <laughs> and I can't, I, there's no bite down there. So the nearest bite I can get is right here. So at this point, I'm going to cut. When I cut that, I'm going to get this reducer, increaser, whichever direction you're going in. This is an inch and a half, and that's two inch. Then I'm going to get, I don't know where it's at. Then I'm going to get a little piece of two inch pipe that goes up. And then my drain is going to sit on top of that. I can't show the process because I don't have some. I don't have a cameraman. And so what I did is I got a couple of 45s, a street elbow, if you will, just in case I have to bump this out in order to get this center because it is bumped out already. You see. So in order to facilitate that, if I have to, then once I get, once I increase this from inch and a half to two inch and if i have to bump out a little bit then i'm going to put this right there i'm going to put the street right here and then that's going to give me about mm, a two inch bump out if i need it so i have it in case i need it but hopefully i won't need it but i can tell squarely that this drain was never set center it's probably it looks like about two inches off which is why i went ahead and got these pieces just in case so that's going to reduce dramatically the room that i have in there because obviously these pieces put together with a couple of two inch pieces attached to those are going to reduce and i i want my drain my drain flange wants to be flush with this concrete slab and that's the whole point we're trying to get that drain flange flush once i have that done i'm going to get some shale Fill that in up to the concrete level, um, probably about right down there. I'm going to fill in some shale, some rock, and then I'm going to pour concrete and envelop this whole thing in concrete. Um, on a typical bathtub construction, there'll be a box very similar to this, but usually you have grade, so you have dirt that you're looking at. It's usually some wood that... So, because this is a plastic fiberglass 
tub, or it used to be anyway, um, they don't have that going on. Instead, they just kind of, when they poured the slab, they just went ahead and, yeah, they use concrete, but usually it's dirt. And when, whenever you do a shower, all of your plumbing down below here, your two inch pipe and all that stuff gets enveloped in concrete as opposed to a tub, which does not. So that may be confusing to some people, but that's just what, that's just what it is. Yeah, this is definitely off center. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, the next step is to get this pipe off, throw this away, um, configure my drain situation. I have my drain flange outside already, my shower drain flange as it were. Um, and so I'm going to configure that um, and get that all set up before I put the rock in or the shale and then the concrete on top of that. And then at that point, you're ready to go forward with pouring your shower pan and all that stuff, putting your liner down, etc., etc. So I will, I will do what I can possibly to film it. I don't know. Or I'll film afterward after I've got all this stuff together as a dry fit to kind of show you what I'm getting at. For those of you that want to know. All right, so I ran into a bit of a problem. I cut down a couple of little pieces of um, two inch pipe so that I can configure this whole thing and make it work the way I wanted to, but it's not gonna work. This would normally go, so normally go like that. But as you can clearly see, Putting that onto the inch and a half gives me way too much of a rise. Although it would have worked because it would have got me center. But the problem is the rise. So I was about maybe four or five inches above the concrete slab level. So I have a bunch of plumbing parts that I save. Everything, <laughs> everything I save. Rarely do I take things back because you never know when you're gonna need it. Um, this is a sweeping elbow which gives you too much rise so i brought that in but i'm not going to use it what i came up with is this um and it's still not going to work so there's a thing called a hub and uh, why is that cockeyed so there's a thing called a hub and i'm going to show you that in just a few minutes um the hub goes directly right here where the two inch so this is an inch and a half uh 90 and the inch and a half 90 street gives you the bite that you need for the inside of this hub. That is also a street. That's a 90 as well. But with these two 90s involved and the hub, and I had to get a little piece of, again, two inch pipe to put in between my drain. Yeah, not gonna work. Two inches. I have two inches rise and that is not gonna work. So, um, it's a bit of a conundrum. Um, I like solving problems. I just don't, <laughs> I just don't have all the parts sometimes to solve the problems with me handy. So the only thing I can do is they have a couple of very, very short 90s, which I don't like doing, um, inch and a half, very short 90s. Um, so I'm going to try tomorrow to get a couple of those and rather than have these sweeps, um, I don't know that I'm going to do any better with those. It's a bit of a conundrum because what happens when you're two inches above where you need to be is you have to fill in all of that with concrete. And so you have two inches of concrete that's going to get packed down on top of this concrete floor, which I don't want to do because then I'm going to have to raise my curb up by another two by four. So there's going to be four two by fours in here instead of three because the edge of a two by four is inch and a half and I'm raising this up two inches. So I'll still be half an inch shy, but um, that still can work. So I really, really am not looking forward to solving this. Um, this is what I was talking about. This is a hub as opposed to this reducer. This is a reducer and this is, oh, there it is. This is a hub that I was telling you. So oh, my two inch connector you have to have also and that creates a bigger problem so the two inch hub two inch to inch and a half hub fits snugly inside of the two inch pipe and then you have the recess here for the inch and a half which I have on this street elbow so 
of the recess fits right inside of there, which makes it really easy. You don't have to get, you don't have to deal with two of these. But I think tomorrow I'm going to have to deal with two of these with a um, direct 90 rather than a little sleeping thing. Um, and you should have a sweeping thing for plumbing for water to flow easily. But in this case, um, one has to trump the other. So I have to be able to get this drain flush with this situation. Um, and so, yeah, I don't want to have to do two of those 90 short 90s, but it looks like I'm going to have to. And I still probably will have a rise. I'll probably reduce mm, by about an inch or so. Possibly. Another thing, too, I have on occasion. Uh, hold on a second. I'll pull this out. Not very often, but on very rare occasions like this, I can reduce a little bit of my height by simply getting rid of a little bit of this. So I have about an inch of bite going on here, all the way up to this edge. And I have taken this on a chop saw and I have reduced this. By an inch to about half an inch before because at the end of the day all you have to do is get enough bite you put some primer and some glue on here and get enough bite on there that it's watertight and then it's going to be encapsulated by concrete anyway so it's not ideal but i have cheated and done that before so you know just to give me a little bit more height but we're stuck like chuck right now until tomorrow and tomorrow is another day so i'll tell it then. So it took some finagling. Um, I actually got a little frustrated yesterday and left, figuring that I'll go to Home Depot today, which I did, and get a few more parts. So uh, the parts that I got were a couple of street elbows, street 90s as it were. Street 90s got me uh, about the same two inches, about an inch and a half or so of where I needed to be. So this opening here would have been for the inch and a half pipe down there and it would have set up like that and then I would have had to put um, the bushing that I talked about before on top of that um, and still I would have ended up with a little piece inside of here with the bushing and yeah it would have brought me up still too high. So the street elbows didn't work. If you look at that and you look at that these are immediate 90s, which I talked about yesterday. That still brought me up too high, although it cut down. It looks like two inches, but it wasn't um, because you still have to you still have to put something. You still have to put some inch and a half inside of. Oh, that's two inch. I don't have the inch and a half, but anyway, you still have to put an inch and a half pipe in here for three quarters, and then another one for that bushing to go on to. But what I finally came up with was this still a street and this is still my bushing and the bushing is two inches which goes directly into there pushes down another looks like half an inch or so and that will push down a little bit more and then that goes right into there feeds right into there and it's just lovely and so i solved the problem sometimes in my job it's very redundant um it should have been easy it should have been easy, but it wasn't. And it wasn't because of me, it was because of the contractor, the people who built this house. Obviously you can see how offset it is from where the shower valve is to where it came up from the ground, from below grade at that point. They struggled. <laughs> see, it actually comes up this way. It was off to the right, and so they struggled. You know, they put a 90 in here. Uh, yeah, and a 45 and then another quick 45, or two 90s and a 45 and then another 45 street to get it to center, which was wrong. It's almost like the plumber didn't know what the slab guy was doing or the slab guy didn't know what the plumber was doing or something went wrong. Um, and that transferred to my problem, but the problem is solved. So the way it stands, and you're not gonna run into this more than likely, more than likely your the P-trap is, as I said before, below grade, you know, usually 14, 18 inches, whatever, where the P-trap is, it comes directly up 
and should be in line. So you're not going to go through this much angst trying to make this happen, but just in case you do, there is a way to manipulate it. So I have more manipulation I have to do. At this point, I am, um, what my tape measure? I think I, I measured half an inch, but of course when you glue down, you usually get that back. So yeah, from slab, I'm about half an inch shy. When I glue all this into place, I should make up that half an inch discrepancy as the glue allows everything to compress down a little better. So I should make that up. But if I don't, then I have an alternative plan, which I've done twice before, where I'm half an inch shy. And guess what backer board is? Half an inch. So I wet this whole floor down. After this is glued, after the concrete is poured, the drain is level. I've got my level here. Um, at that point, I can uh, wet this down, screed out some thin set, and then glue a half inch piece of backer board down directly to the floor. So I don't have to come in here with, say, a leveling compound, um, which I could easily do, but same old, same old, rather than mixing up a bunch of leveling compound and pouring it in here, which I still might do. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But putting in a piece of backer board and gluing it down to the concrete floor is an alternative also to doing leveling compound. You're not going to pour concrete for half an inch because it's got rocks in it. Um, you could do mortar, but you would have to screed the mortar out and make sure. Yeah, so that's an issue also. Um, but yeah, I am going forward with the gluing process now that I've showed everything that has to be done. Um, as I said, I'll put some shale, some rock down there to make up that difference up to the point of the concrete, and then I'll pour this whole thing with concrete screeded out nicely to the edge of the drain. With any luck, it'll be perfect at that point. If it's not, then I'll go forward with rectifying that situation. But there's always a solution to problem. You know, E minus C square was there. Einstein grabbed it, but if he hadn't, somebody else would. So I like uh, coming up with solutions rather than focusing on the problem. So I finally have this set in place. It has been glued everywhere it needs to be glued at. And I am level with the floor. So I don't have to do any backer board. I don't have to do any self level or anything like that. Um, good thing to have a level around so that you can check both directions. I think this direction is off slightly, but that can be manipulated once the uh, concrete is in there. I have a bunch of rock down there all the way up to the concrete level. Fast setting, fast setting concrete. It doesn't have to be fast setting. Spritz a little bit of water in there. Spritzing water in there isn't really needed because the concrete's gonna have enough water in it anyway, but it does help a little bit adhering everything. So I'm gonna mix up the concrete and get this taken care of and out of my way. Okay. Didn't take long to mix up those bag and a half. Somebody had asked me recently on one of my videos where I did something similar to this. I wish you had shown pouring the concrete. There's nothing to show. You know, you throw the concrete in there, you pack it down with the end of a two by four or whatever you want to. I did it with my hand, pack it down really well, get it all up around the edge of all the drain material and all that stuff. And then when you realize you're short, mix up a little bit more, pack it down, pack it down. And you don't have to make it look pretty. Sometimes we're focused on that. I just have a six inch tape knife, you know, drywall knife I use for a lot of my uh, masonry type of stuff. Um, just to get the surface pretty, but it's not necessary because you're gonna put a pan liner down there anyway. The two things that are most important, keep this bottom flange clear because you're gonna have to wrap pan liner on top of that. So yeah, keep that bottom flange clear and make sure it's level in both directions. So I'm level here. I think I'm an eighth of an inch off on the other side. Yeah, about an eighth of an inch. If I lift it up there, yeah. But that's okay, because I'm gonna have tile and I want my water to kind of rush down to that end. And then of course, my tile is gonna rush down to that end naturally. And I will have my tile sitting above the drain slightly with a little taper edge. So I'll have positive water flow regardless. Um, if I wanted to, I could put some weight on it before it gets too dry. I could put some weight on this end of it uh, to get it exactly level, let it dry overnight, and it'll dry in place. But, you know, for my purposes, it's not extremely important that I'm off that little eighth of an inch. So that's basically, basically, that's exactly how you do retrofit from a 
tub conversion drain to a shower drain. So I hope that helps somebody and I'm gonna move on to my next phase on this bathroom job. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, 10, $15 a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing up from YouTube at all. If you're gonna call me for advice, please donate $50 for 30 minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post videos. And thank you very much for your support.